Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard that Challenger 1 here on Mustok and um, yeah I continue my journey through the top tier tanks to get a bit of a grip uh, how to play them and what they're really about, how they feel and so forth and I have to say so far the Challenger 1 is the least attractive to play, the least straightforward but not a tank that is considered to be useless or even bad. So when you are used to the Chieftain Mark 10, you kind of have a good feeling about the Challenger 1. Except maybe a bit the stock grind, but I will come to this later on. So again, I don't have too much time. Sadly, I thought I'd have the entire day to play with this tank, to get a feeling for it. And um, well, then, you know, real life. And I have to go off after I'm recording this and rendering the video. But nevertheless, what is about what is it about the Challenger 1 that is so good, so bad, and in total makes it a very specialized tank compared to the um, well, the M1 Abrams or the Leopard 2 car? Well, it's it's kind of a try by the British, if you're not referring to the chieftains here, to make something in between between a Leopard and an Abrams, you know, the Abrams fully protected from the front, more or less, and the Leopard 2K just building on speed and monstrous firepower. And this tank is a bad try to make the best out of the two worlds. This is this is a, just in a nutshell, okay? So, and the tank, again, is fully upgraded. Again, it's gifted to me by Gaijin. But here you can see how strong the tank is in a hold down position and I'm bouncing your numerous shots from, well, what looks like a T-64. I'm not quite sure which designation. Could be an A, could be an B. Ah, it's an A. It's an A. Okay. And we went straight through the frontal glazes. Um, of, no, not the frontal glazes, but the turret front with the AP FSDS round, the upgraded one. And yeah, I have to say, I tried it a little bit with the stock ammunition. It's not that great. The shot L15A5 is an APDS round with 412 millimeters of penetration. So the situation is a bit similar with the uh, L7 gun variants between the M60 and the M60A1, um, where the other APDS has a bit more um, penetration, but not. It doesn't make the difference. Also, you get your shell 31 Hess shell, 152 millimeters of penetration. Um, you should always should take some of them with you against, you know, um, flak vehicles or SBAs, whatever. As a tier 2 upgrade, you get the shot L23. And that is already a pretty good AP FSD as run with 410 millimeters of penetration. But you want more. You want, of course, the best run, which is the shot L23A1, which has 440 millimeters of penetration and on paper that is very similar to the stock shell of the t64b tier 4 upgrade on paper same performance as stock shell on another tank you kind of see the pattern emerging here with the challenger it's not a very nice uh, stock tank the mobility well fully upgraded we have our nearly 20 horsepower per ton ratio 62 tons which is pretty heavy and 1200 horsepower top speed 56 kilometers an hour but it is very often close to the top speed so it's actually not that slow it's not the fastest tank but it's not slow so when you compare it to the leopard 2k or the kpz mbt 70 series or you know the M m1 abrams then of course the tank feels sluggish slow but it isn't it's just you know it has stiff competition the reverse gear is also good but it's the most sluggish tanks that i've driven so far and you could see it here it's good in a hull down position and this makes it a specialized tank and that is kind of not really fitting the matter now i see more and more um, big maps in war thunder and that is good this is where those top tier tanks really have a playground where they can look for their positions and then either flank or go straight in or in the shape of the challenge one go hull down and one other theme is the longer the tank stays alive the more dangerous it becomes 
the longer you can hold the flank the better it gets and especially in holding down on advance when you are in a good position which by the way then are rare this tank is monstrous let's talk about the armor so the lower glazes is actually weaker than on a chieftain mark 10 with the line of sight thickness weaker and behind it you know very convenient for the enemy is always ammunition even if you take out the propellant charges in warhead um, right next to the driver there is always the propellant charges um, underneath the feet of the commander and the loader and with a center shot with an APDS or APFSDS around or hell even APHE shells you can penetrate this tank from the front and blow it up reliably really reliably and that also has a bit of an impact on the fire part which will come later on then the upper frontal plate is really strong 400 millimeters of protection against kinetic energy ammunition so it rivals a lot of the APDS APFSDS rounds that gets fired at it when they're coming from especially stock tanks um, or the KPZ or the Leopard A1A1 cannot go through even the APFSDS at least on paper how it will work out in reality well nobody has shot me there so far then against chemical energy ammunition 600 millimeters of penetration so the ss11 might might not go through depends on the exact angle but the ito on the big light panzer or the stock heat fs on the leopard 2k will challenge the front armor but then there is the turret the turret 470 millimeters against kinetic energy ammunition the only tank that i guess is, has a strong enough um, ammunition to go through that is the upgraded APFSDS shell at least on paper from the t64b and then against chemical energy ammunition six uh, 750 millimeters of penetration just the hot rocket can melt through but then against kinetic energy ammunition and chemical energy ammunition, the values are reduced when you have a flatter angle. They're going down to 730 millimeters, which is still very good, and 700 millimeters, which, you know, still just lets the hot rocket through. So the turret is amazing. But then there is this big, big gap um, where there is practically no armor, just 60 millimeters of. Uh, you know normal steel armor where the driver's head is and again it's conveniently uh, aimed at where ammunition sits the engine sits and so forth and then you have four crew members a commander and also a gunner and a loader together with the driver and when two of them get taken out your lo your reload gets longer like on the leopard but the leopard has a faster stock um rate of our a faster rate of fire stock and so the 8.7 seconds stock reload gets faster than this the best reload that you can get is 6.7 which is not too bad but again that's 1.7 seconds longer than both the leopard 2k and also the m1 abrams with their ace crews respectively and so yeah whereas the 120 millimeter uh ordnance bltk l11 with its 7.5 seconds has 0.8 seconds longer reload on the chieftains well at that battle rating you have an advantage now you have a disadvantage with a gun that fires even faster yeah not that great is it and so you have no auto loader so your reload can get longer and i felt that i felt that in the few battles that i played as you can see right now um yes i could reload a hash shell um here and there but ultimately uh, it doesn't really matter in this perspective in this perspective and i finish off the zsu 37 for my multi-strike times four and my sixth kill so at this point in time we push the enemy back one of the advantages that i had was to occupy one t64 and i just could um, also deal with another one and i could damage them it's not the most perfect battle i'd say but this is a battle where my armor actually counted where it didn't really matter that i have a um, 
stabilizer, which is one of the worst stabilizers that I have come across in my experience. And this is, as you can see with now this ping and this packet loss. It's not down to any ping or packet loss in, in the battles that I played. I can, you know, separate this. The tank is good at holding a flank in a hull down position, not pushing, letting enemies coming uh, come at you. But this doesn't really fit the meta with some objectives and so forth. But it's a good support tank and maybe you can use the push of parts of your teams to get into position where you are then the long range sniper. But then you're not as good as some other tanks might be, T-64B. So ultimately it, it's the least attractive tank to play at top tiers. Yes, I know I still have to um, take out the MX-30 B2 Brenners, but that is something completely different over tiered and yet, you know, shows how brutal the compression is at between 6.7 and uh, 8.7, 9.0 even. But the Challenger is not as bad as some people might um, wanted me to believe. But then again, it's the stock grant that's a bit tricky with the stock APDS round. And we all know how awful the even worse APDS on the Chieftain Mark 10 is as a stock grant. And then it's going to be okay with the stock AP FSDS. But with the new high tier tanks, it really seems more important about the ammunition that you get as the gun that you have. Because for example, I think that the uh, lower caliber 105 millimeter M68A1 heavily modified L11 gun is, and there was a big discussion about this. Um, I stay with my sources, so deal with it, I guess. The thing is that this gun just simply has better performance on the battlefield with the quick uh, reload, with more ammunition, um, to a certain degree even comparable ammunition, and uh, just a better stabilizer on a tank that is also better suited to carry it. So yeah, the Challenger 1, um, not really 9.3 material, 9.0 in the current meta would be better but again i expect a battle rating overhaul so this might change in the future and again um, i play this tank to get a feeling for all the top tier tanks before i get into making the tank reviews that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this video if so please give it a like share it with your friends subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields of war thunder